Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of TCG Talk, back today with another video and another How To Ninja video today. Uh, our last How To Ninja video in the How To Ninja series, we went over Ira, um, or not Ira, but Benji, <laughs> and today we're going over Ira uh, and her hero type and some of the key cards, and then kind of giving you an idea of a couple of decks that you could run depending on what type of Ira you want to run. For anybody that's not familiar with the channel, maybe it's your first time seeing it or it's the first time seeing this series, we're doing a how to ninja series where I'm just going to go over every aspect of ninja again from start to finish and kind of give you an idea of if you're a new player or maybe you're like a, a decently seasoned player, but you haven't played ninja before or whatever it is. And you just want to get as much information as you can about the ninja class to see if it's right for you. Uh, then hopefully a series will help you out with that. So let me know what other content you want to see in the How to Ninja series in the comments below, and hopefully I can get to them as quickly as possible. For this and Ira, so Ira is the original hero of the game. Uh, she was the first hero ever to be shown or displayed. A lot of people had the Welcome to Ira decks uh, when the game first came out. Um, and she honestly has the simplest hero ability of any hero that you can think of. Um, basically, every second attack that she swings with gets plus one, whether that's a weapon whether it's attack action, whatever it may be, uh, it gets plus one power. Um, so the original key arc with Ira was she was a very efficient deck that allowed you to play both generic and ninja cards and be able to um, block with one or two cards from hand very efficiently, while also then being able to uh, come back and swing like Kadachi Kadachi and then an attack, because with her, her second attack gets plus one. So when you have a card like Mask of Momentum, um, it allows you to uh, swing with one Kadachi for one, swing with another Kadachi for two, and then attack. So basically your opponent, if they don't want you to get that draw from Mask of Momentum, is kind of forced to block that second Kadachi, which is coming in for two. If they don't, they're going to keep taking chip damage. So you would just keep whittling your opponent down and then come in with a nice big attack at the very end uh, Excuse me to, uh, to finish off the game. Since then, since that original time frame, her power level has gone down a little bit just because the power level of the game is scaled, but she's still a very good deck. She has basically went from like S plus tier to maybe like a low A tier deck, in my opinion. Um, still a very, very valid deck. Her issue now is she doesn't have a lot of armor block, which a lot of heroes in the game now because of Oldheim and uh, bef this right before you got Living Legend and like uh, Dorinthia and stuff like that have a lot of armor block, so it's a lot harder for her to, uh, to be effective. But nonetheless... Um, if you're new to the game or you're new to Ninja and you want to play a hero in Blitz, that's just going to get you indoctrinated and in like how Mask of Momentum works and like how, you know, like the card advantage aspect of, of, uh, Ninja works. She's a really good hero to start. So I'm gonna go through a couple of cards, key cards that you might see if you're a new player. They're common cards. They're good cards to have. If you don't have Command and Conquers, you don't have Enlightened Strikes, things of that nature. They're really good cards to get and cards I suggest getting at the commoner level, um, so one is Bittering Thorns, very simple card from Crucible of War. Basically, if it hits, your next attack gets plus one. This card's really good on your second attack because it'll get plus one from Ira's ability. So it'll attack for four. And then if it hits, it's giving your next attack plus one. So they have to defend that four break point while also, and if they don't defend it well enough, then you basically get a plus one on your next attack. So this is really good to put a lot of pressure on your opponent. It is a yellow. You can't pitch it for Kadachis because it won't give them go again. I mean, you can, but it won't do anything. But you can pitch it if you absolutely had to uh, in, a, in a pinch. So really good commoner card to have. Um, next one is a more higher price card, Command and Conquer. This is really good in like the, in the aggro and in the control mid range. Iris, it's really good to have an overarching attack um, and kind of end your turn on a really on a really powerful note. Uh, it's also really good with even bigger than that if you can get lucky and draw it with even bigger than that or have it in your hand when you play even bigger than that in the more of an aggro build. Um, I've had turns where I you know I Kadachi Kadachi with a tunic counter um, played even bigger than that. Uh, played like something as simple as like a command and conquer popping Goliath gauntlet or something like that. Even if they blocked it out, that second Kadachi coming with command and conquer for eight, go again off my tunic counter and then playing something like a push the point or something. So, or play push the point then command and conquer. So it's just really good, um, with, with stuff like that. It's a very high price card, but with Ira, it's really good. Uh, it's really nice. Um, same thing with Flying Kick, another overarching card. If you don't have a Command and Conquer, this is probably your next best thing. It doesn't challenge the Arsenal like Command and Conquer does, but what it does do um, is it, if it's played on a chain link three or higher, it gains plus two. So if you have a two encounter, you can Kadachi Kadachi off of a blue, play your two encounter and the last resource, and then Flying Kick for seven. So off a two card hand, you dealt nine damage, right? 
um, or 10 damage, excuse me. So really good card. Um, if you can couple this with like Goliath Gauntlet, it kind of telegraphs the card a little bit, but it will be attacking for nine. So it's really good for that. Um, my Goliath Gauntlet builds, I try to target Command and Conquer and Flying Kick, obviously, because um, those are the two two cost attacks in the deck. Uh, and we'll see that here in a second. But really good. If you don't have like a Command and Conquer, this is a really good starting point. Next one's push the point. This is perfect with Snapdragon Scalers, right? If you can couple this with a with a even bigger than that, it's amazing. Or not, yeah, even bigger than that, it's amazing because it gives it go again automatically. But even without even bigger than that, again, off a tunic counter, an ideal play is Kadachi for one. They'll almost always take the first Kadachi. Then you push the point for seven because of Ira's ability and the plus two from the card. Um, you give it go again with Snapdragon Scalers, and then you play like Command and Conquer for six, or you play Flying Kick for seven off your tunic counter. So you're doing 15 damage in, in a three card hand. So really, really nice, um, really good. Uh, this is this is honestly most of the time my main Snapdragon Scalers uh, target, if anything. So it's what I'm looking to use. Then you have Twin Twisters, which just came out in um, Everfest. It's really good. It's similar to Bittering Thorns, but it gives you an option. You can either give it plus one, or you can give your next attack plus one if it hits. So you can either choose the same thing as Bittering Thorns. You play this on the second attack. It comes in for four automatically, and you choose the option of give plus one to the next attack if it hits. Or you can give it another plus one, and it's coming in for five. Um, so this is really good off of, like, if this is the second attack, it's really good to give the next attack plus one and put that pressure on them. If it's a third attack, then you can give it plus one anyway, so it comes in for four. So basically, bottom line is this attack's always going to be coming in for four um, with the potential to give the next attack plus one. And then finally, this is the trap card. I would not run this card unless you are very new to the game and you don't have another card to pick. Whirly Mist Blossom sounds really cool on paper. If this card was a three power originally, it actually would be decent because it would hit the four breakpoint off of Ira's ability on the second attack. But even off of Ira's ability, this is still only coming in for three. If it hits, you do get to draw two cards. But the only way this card even works is if you have an even bigger than that. Not even bigger than that. If you have a Razor Reflex or you have pupped this card up somehow so it gets more like it's more oppressive. Um, overall though, this card's kind of a trap. If you're very new to the game, you don't have anything else. You can play this card. Definitely. Uh, it's really good in commoner, but, uh, for like a seasoned and tuned Ira deck, I don't suggest playing this card. So yeah, that's Ira. Um, we'll go through two quick decks really fast, uh, to kind of give people an idea, um, of the two kind of archetypes with Ira. When Ira first came out, her mid range control builds were more, were more popular since the game's gone on and the speed of play has just gone so far up, it's really hard to do those builds effectively. Um, especially in the tails meta when Briar was a thing, like you just couldn't, Ira couldn't keep up. Like it just, she just couldn't do it. So it's kind of transitioned more into an aggro build, but I'll show you both builds because one build might be more popular than the other, depending on what time frame you're watching this video. And this is kind of an example. This is not the like, best deck in the world but to me it's a very tuned uh mid range to control uh more mid range build where the key of this build that you're looking at right now is to block with two cards from hand one to two cards and then attack with one to two cards right um and then on big swing turns like maybe if you have a push the point and command and conquer in hand then you kind of take a little damage to then deal a lot right so you're playing the two kadachis the typical loadout now that uh heart and cross trap is banned and blitz is breaking skills findel spring tunic Mask of Momentum and Snapdragon Scalers. Breaking Scales only works for Pounding Gale in this deck, and then it works for your blues. I like to have it not so much for its attack reaction buff, but because it blocks for one, so it's really good uh, to block a breakpoint attacks. So like a lot of these attacks in here block for three, so if you block with a three power attack and then Breaking Scales, you can defend a four power attack. If you want to put Goliath Gauntlet in here in order to buff your Command and Conquer and Flying Kick, you can. Uh, but I just like having the block personally. Uh, mask momentum with Ira, you can run her without mass momentum, but honestly, it it doesn't nearly have the effect that it would have because the whole thing about Ira is forcing them to block that second Kadachi. And if you don't have mass momentum, they don't have to respect your second Kadachi. They can respect it off of just not wanting to take damage, but that's about it, right? So uh, be careful with that. If you don't have mask momentum, the, the power level of this hero kind of really does go down. This hero really wants mask momentum to be proper, right? And then Snapdragon Scaler is pretty simple. It gives you any card with one or cost less go again off attack reaction. 
Um, in the sideboard, since Heart and Cross Trap is banned, and you don't, if you don't have a tunic, play Deep Blue. It's really good. If you have like a three or four card red hand, you can sink a card and basically treat it as a blue almost, like you're pitching it as a blue. Um, just a really good card that came out of uh, that came out of uh, ever not Everfest. Gosh, came out of Tails. Um, so and then Null Rune, you can put one more piece of Null Rune here. For Kano, I'd run Null Rune 3, and I would keep Mask of Momentum if you have it. If you don't have Mask of Momentum, i keep Snapdragon Scalers. Um, so for the deck, you're running the full set of Flick Flax and Sigil of Solace. Again, the mid range -y kind of what you ideally want to do is block with a Flick Flack. Hopefully, it's the only thing you have to block with and keep a three-card hand. Or block with a Flick Flack and then like a Pounding Gale um, to block for five. So you block for eight with two cards, effectively. Um, basically, like playing two defense reactions. So... Full set flick flax ancestral empowerment allows you to buff a decent amount of your attacks. Not all your attacks. Uh, it'll buff six, um, six of your red attacks in the deck, but it's still really good. I, I know it doesn't buff as many attacks as it would in a Katsu or a Benji, but it's a block three. You still have the chance of game pounding, go and leg tap, go or not go again, but plus one draw a card. It's just really good for that. And then in a pinch, you can use it on one of your blues. If you absolutely had to, if you draw drew like a three blue hand or something, but I like it just because it's a block three and it gives me the chance uh, to to block to add on to some of these cards. Plus, like if you take this out, you're not going to put a different uh, non-attack action in there. Um, you'll probably just put another attack in, like a head jab or 100 wins now or something like that. You could do that as well. Uh, but I used to use this. Command Conquer and Flying Kick, we talked about their use cases. Um, Enlightened Strike's really good. It's better in the new version of Agro. Uh, Ira because of even bigger than that, but it's really good in the old version as well. Usually I'll pick, you know, I can pick the draw card feature and Snapdragon Scalers it. So it'll come in for six on the second attack. You snap it uh, after choosing the draw card and then you continue with your turn or you can play at the very end of a turn and it comes in for seven. Um, just really good, really good overall. I actually don't use the go again feature on this card as much as other stuff. I typically like to use draw card or the plus two, but you can use all three, honestly. Um, raise the reflex, pretty simple, right? It'll give stuff like pounding gill, go again, push the point, go again. Uh, you can do snatch as the ideal target, obviously, right? Uh, torn and tempo, all the, like these set of attacks right here are where you want to, is what you want to use razor on. Um, where you're doing leg tap and pounding gill, just good value cards. Leg tap comes in in the second attack for five, right? With go again, a one for five, go again. It's just good value. Pounding Gale is a one for six. So on a two card hand, like if you have a blue and pounding Gale, you can Kadachi, you can Kadachi, Kadachi, pounding Gale, depending on how you think they're going to block, or you can Kadachi, pounding Gale for six and use attack for seven. Because either way, you might be losing one damage, but um, it just depends on what you're doing. Push the point we kind of talked about. Um, snatch is a big thing in this deck, especially if you can couple it with a Razor Reflex. Uh, same thing with Torrent Tempo is really good. I use, I like to play Torrent Tempo on the second attack. It's a one for six with potential go again. If I'm making my opponent block for six, especially like old school Ira, I'm winning and doing really well. And then blues, you typically run around 14 blues with Ira. I've ran as low as 12 and like more aggro builds and I've ran as high as 16. I think 14 is kind of the sweet spot and that's where I would go. So that, that was the mid rangey control build. Now for the aggro build, um, the changes are definitely running Goliath Gauntlet. Uh, because we want to give Command Conquer and Flying Kick those buffs. Still running Tunic in the main board. Uh, you can run Deep Blue in the side, right, if you don't have Tunic. I put Mask and Pouncing Links here just to make a note. I would never run Mask and Pouncing Links. I'm just, I literally put this in here to remember to talk about it. Um, you just wouldn't use this in Ira. This is a Benji card. Don't use it. Don't fall into the trap of trying to use it. Um, it's more of just kind of showing you, like, don't run the card. I won't even talk about it. Just It's not an Ira card. Um so one change I made was you're running four even bigger than that instead of the flick flax, basically, right? Um, these are really good because they can give cards like Command and Conquer go again. They can give Enlightened Strike go again while also drawing a card. They can give Flying Kick go again, Push the Point go again, Pounding Gill go again. Um, I really like these cards. Pounding Gill is kind of the one that you could sub out if you want to because it's one for five with no go again value isn't as good anymore, but it's still a good card. I, if you want to go a little bit wider with her, you could do head jab, right? Head jab be a zero for four with go again, which is really nice. Um, so there's that. Torrent tempo, just great value. Twin twisters we talked about before. Um, and then again, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve blues in this list instead of 14. But I am going a little bit more aggro and a little bit, you know, it's a little bit. 
I'm not going to want to block as much with this with this deck. So I don't have to worry about playing off two card hands. So I'm going to have a little bit more resources to mess with. Um, the key with this deck and like kind of your swing turns are using even bigger than that to give like chain of attacks. So if you even bigger than that, you know, like I spoke about before, a common line is even bigger than that. You play push the point, right? Um, and then it has go again. And you play command and conquer. Or I've had turns where I had a tunic resource. I could cheat. I played even bigger than that. I gave my command and conquer go again. Command Conquer came in with Goliath Gauntlet for nine go again um, because a plus two from Goliath Gauntlet, plus one from Ira's ability. And then I played like a flying kick, right? Uh, with pitching this, the last card in my hand to play a flying kick, which came in for seven. So I'm dealing 16, 17 damage, right? While also threatening their arsenal off a four card hand. Um, so that's really nice. Um, there's other types of stuff you can do with it, like Enlightened Strike on the third attack, choosing. You know, the draw card feature, but it has go again from the quicken token. Um, push the points, a good target for it. Pounding gills, a good target for it. Shoot, even torrent tempo is a good target for it. One for five with unconditional go again now. It's really nice. Uh, so you're trying to use even bigger than that to kind of power these cards that normally would maybe stall you if they're brought, blocked properly uh, and make a lot more pressure on your opponent. So it's a lot more aggro based. Um, you you play both, decide which one's best for you. I think in this current meta, this version of Ira is better. Um, you're not looking to block a whole lot. You're only like value blocking when you can, um, and using stuff like, uh, uh, using stuff like even bigger than that and these kind of key cards to, to do well. So that's the basis of the two decks. Hopefully it made sense. Um, Ira is very simple. There's not a whole lot to go into with her. Um, it's really good hero to start you on the game, especially Ninja. Like it's the number one hero to start on. I definitely suggest it. Um, but yeah. Hopefully y'all enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, a like, comment, or subscribe if you want to. If not me, go to another Flush Bug creator. Do it for them so we can get more people seeing this game. Uh, and yeah, hopefully y'all have a great rest of your day. And I'll see y'all in the next How to Ninja episode. Thank y'all so much.